scriptures talk about a blessedness that happens to a man whose delight is in the law of God. So as someone says, it says, but his delight is in the law of God. And doth he meditate day and night. He says that that man is like a tree planted by the rivers of water, whose leaves do not wither, when he bears fruit in every season. As you are about listening to this message, we believe that your life is going to be like that man planted by the rivers of water. Your leaves are forever going to bear. And we know that your, your season will not pass by. You will forever shine and you will forever bear fruit. We have a lot of content to share with you. So we would entreat you to subscribe to this channel as well as like us. Hit that notification bell to receive more updates from us because we know that whatever content here is going to set you on calls at every time. It's going to make you attain whatever stature that Christ wants you to attain. Thank you. An encounter in the name of Jesus by your word. King of kings, Lord of lords, faithful and true, Lamb of God, we worship you. You're the King of kings, Lord of lords, faithful and true, Lamb of God, I worship you. Very simple song. The King of Kings, Lord of Lords, faithful and true, Lamb of God, I worship you. One more time. King of Kings, Lord of Lords, faithful and true, Lamb of God. Praise the bread of life, Emmanuel, God with us, the one who saves. We praise the cup of life, that glorious spring that washes our sin away father we bless you speak to our hearts oh god in the name of jesus christ blessed be the name of the lord please be seated hallelujah Psalm 102, then we'll read verse 13. I'll be teaching tonight on times and seasons. Psalms 102 and verse 13. Let me begin by encouraging our hearts that the strength of the believer in this kingdom is the degree and the extent of light that you have the extent of your spiritual illumination is where your strength is derived from hallelujah when a believer does not have high level spiritual illumination you will be around spiritual things but you will never have the power to enjoy the blessings that come so um conferences like this like i would always observe is an opportunity for us to be exposed to the light the various dimensions of the light of the kingdom hallelujah when we have high level illumination and we understand the speakings of god then we can connect our faith with understanding then it will produce for us hallelujah praise the name of the lord Tonight's teaching will bless you and I pray that your heart be opened 
in the name of Jesus. Let's read together Psalm 102 and verse 13. Ready? One to read. Thou shalt arise and have mercy upon Zion for the time to favor her. Yea, the set time is come. Let's read the B part together for the time. Ready? One to read. For the time to favor her. Yea, the set time hallelujah the bible records that jesus wept two times principally um, as revealed in scripture the first time he wept was in john chapter 11 when he was at the grave of lazarus when he was told that lazarus was gone he cried and oh how he loved him in john 11 35 the bible says jesus wept and then they said oh how that he loved him he wept as an expression of his his love and compassion that he had for lazarus the second time he would weep was in luke chapter 19 luke chapter 19 and we'll begin our reading from verse 42 luke 19 42 the bible says that he stood over jerusalem and he began to weep and he said if thou hast known even in this thy day the things that belong on your peace he says for now they are your eyes let's jump for the sake of time to 44 the bible says that they will go through all these things these negative things it says because thou knowest not the time of thy visitation hallelujah he wept because many things would pass them by they would become victims of life victims of all kinds of demonic oppressions and he says simply because you did not know the time of your visitation in second first chronicles chapter 12 and verse 32 a popular scripture first chronicles 12 32 it says and of the children of issachar which were men that had understanding of the times this was the advantage they had over their brethren that they could discern times they could discern seasons he says to know what israel ought to do and the heads of them were 200 and all their brethren were at their command may that be your testimony jesus now god designed in fact let's go to genesis genesis chapter one let me show you something uh before i begin to teach genesis chapter one please what we know as the creation story now verse 14 genesis 1 verse 14 the bible says please give us verse 14 and god said let there be light in the firmament of the heavens to divide the day from the night and let them be for signs help me for seasons for days and for years so god made lights and he used those lights to divide seasons that immediately tells you that our activities on earth is a function of times and seasons please write it down if you must write as far as our work on earth is concerned we subscribe to the law of times and seasons that means that everything you do on earth must be done in time and must be done with respect to time in ecclesiastes chapter 3 and verse 1 the preacher gave us a greater perspective and he said to everything say everything one more time please to everything there is a season just stop there please look very carefully to everything when the bible says to everything it means there is nothing under the earth that will defy the law of times and seasons to everything there is a season hallelujah and a time for every purpose under the earth let's go to verse 2 now it says a time to be born to be born is not the issue it says a time to be born a time to die 
a time to plant please look up when a woman gets pregnant and after three months under any kind of condition she feels like giving birth do you call that delivery are we together why timing timing the same thing she's afraid of now is the same thing you'll be praying for when she gets to nine months you name them and for one you do not you call that losing a child and for another you congratulate and call it delivery simply because of timing are we together a time to be born then it says a time to die a time to plant a time to pluck up that which is planted verse 3 please a time to kill a time to heal a time to break down and a time to build up let's have one more verse a time to weep and a time to laugh a time to mourn and a time to dance the constant word in all of these verses is time so everything we do under the sun governed by the law of time and seasons that is the first thing i wanted to two the second thing i wanted to know is that god himself in his dealings with men he respects times and seasons god does not dwell in time god does not need time but when it has to do with his dealings with man he limits his operation to subscribe to times and seasons hallelujah in the greek there are many words that express times and seasons but i want us to discuss two of them we're looking at times and seasons the first is the word chronos c-h-r-o-n-o-s the word chronos chronos means the passage of time the sequential movement of time or the quantitative movement of time that means seconds minutes hours the passage of time is what the bible calls chronos hallelujah and then there is another word called kairos k-a-i-r-o-s they're all greek words that express time kairos kairos means a defining moment it means an opportune time it doesn't just mean a passage of time it means a moment in time where certain things whatever happens within that time will have a prolonged effect on an individual hallelujah so we have chronos the passage of time the quantitative passage of time by the minute by the second by the hour and then we have kairos it talks about moments seasons within time hallelujah are we learning already now please listen there is a dimension of grace that is released in every time and in every season there is a dimension of grace that comes with every time and comes with every season in other words there are supernatural possibilities that if you have the discernment you can experience them simply because you align with certain times there's no time to deal with the story in john chapter 5. john chapter 5 is a classic example the man at gate beautiful remember the story the bible says that man had was there for 38 years and the bible tells us that at a certain time not every time if he just fell in the water at a time that the angel did not come to stay he would just come out wet but not healed the bible says at a certain time an angel would come and steer the water and whoever was discerning to fall first as merciful as god is you would think that when the water was stirred so many people should come and yet that time could only accommodate one discerning person the first person i don't know what was wrong with that man that two years became five became 10 became 15 became 20 became 30 became 35 
jesus had to look at that man and the bible says he was there for a long time what was his offense he was near the water are we together he knew what to do but he missed the timing thou shall arise and have mercy upon zion for the time to favor her yea the set time is come so there are graces and there are possibilities that are attached to every time in fact in ecclesiastes chapter 10 verse 11 the bible says he makes all things beautiful not every time please give it to us ecclesiastes 3 11 3 and 11 he makes all things all things beautiful he had made everything beautiful in his time notice he never said your time he had made everything beautiful in his time that means if you can understand the sequence of god's spiritual timing and the way he walks your life will be an expression of the beauty and the glory of god if you are with me say amen, amen. he makes all things beautiful in his time Time is so important in scripture that in psalm 90 and verse 12 the psalmist gave us a very strong counsel it was a prayer he said in your prayer ensure that you pray and say oh teach us so teach us to number our days why that we may apply our hearts unto wisdom there is a relationship between your walking in wisdom and understanding times and seasons teach us to number our days that we may apply our hearts unto wisdom paul was mentoring the church in ephesus in ephesians chapter 5 i'm giving you a few scriptures before i begin to teach 5 from verse 15 ephesians 5 and verse 15 he says see then that ye walk circumspectly the word circumspectly means accurately walk accurately not as fools but as wise where is the wisdom there redeeming the time the word redeem means to buy back are we together he's saying redeeming the time because the days are evil verse 17 hopefully we'll get into that one tomorrow he said wherefore be ye not unwise but understanding what the will of the lord is redeeming the time because the days are evil one last scripture john chapter 9 and verse 4 jesus himself was teaching john chapter 9 let's read together these are the words of jesus ready one to read i must walk the works of him that sent me uh-huh while it is day hold on hold on why would jesus sound so limited while it jesus almighty jesus the word of god the incarnate of the father he's saying even for me since i have become a man i have submitted to times and seasons in other words if i waste my time there will be consequences even as far as redemption is concerned i must walk the works of him that sent me while it is day he says the night comet he didn't say it may come the night certainly will come and when night comes no man no man provided you are a man you will not be able to walk i must walk the walks of him that sent me while it is day he says the night cometh when no man can walk again are we together now most believers do not understand the power of time I have taught and I have read from scripture that the zenith of dominion is dominion over time not over things you can have dominion over things but you are not truly walking in dominion until you can have dominion over time the greatest desire of a dying man is not more things the greatest desire of a dying man is not more influence for instance in Hesek in, in um, isaiah chapter 38 the story of hezekiah hezekiah pleaded for more time that was his prayer give me time because the moment you have time 
every other thing can be restored in time are we together you can see that when god wants to show men mercy he restores years more than things i will restore the years not just the things you can lose money and get it back you can lose your health and go to the hospital but if you lose time that is the end of it in fact did you know that you call the entire journey from when a man is born to when he dies life time life time for as long as his spirit can coexist with his body if it is two days then his lifetime is two days if it is hundred years his lifetime is hundred years you must understand timing because most believers think all times are convenient for everything at the end of this teaching god will plant in you a sense of urgency there will be a divine sense of urgency in your life and you will know that whatever wastes your time is of the devil because that is the most expensive commodity are we together second to the salvation that you have gotten in christ the gift of time time is an equalizer given to everybody with all the advancement in technology nobody has been able to add more time as an asset we have mastered the way of creating robot artificial intelligence to help accelerate us but god in his wisdom ensured that time remains the equalizer for all men if it is morning in nigeria provided you are in nigeria it will not hurry and become afternoon for you it goes slowly and everybody submits to it 12 o'clock in nigeria is 12 o'clock for everybody six o'clock in nigeria is six o'clock for everybody within that time zone everybody helplessly has to wait for that time are we together so time is a blessing it is an equalizer unfortunately unfortunately when satan comes to a man's life the first thing he does is to study your understanding about time when he finds out that you do not have an appreciation of the blessing and the divine significance of time he will occupy you with activities so that you will think just because you are engaging in several activities it means that you are working with time he says redeem the time because the days are evil praise the name of the lord there are people who have wasted time on mundane things wasted time pursuing things that have no purpose no eternal value are we together and at the end of their lives they would look back in regret and say i wish i had time i wish i had time i wish i had time to do this i wish i had time to do that when god wants to help men he grants them wisdom to understand time now please look up this issue of chronos and kairos let me say a word or two about it in every man's life watch this now chronos which is the passage of time remains with us for as long as we are alive but kairos this opportune time does not come all the time I want you to please listen let me explain how do i okay let me explain chronos and kairos for you please look up imagine with me a student who is in school right um that student is expected to read and prepare because there would be exams all the time is that true but for a student say in secondary school there's something called junior wayek and there's something called the senior wayek now all exams are important but those two exams can define the next seasons of that person is that true now those periods are called kairos moments so every time the student is expected to be serious every time the student is expected to read and give his or her best but when you see students who are preparing say for jam you see the kinds of skills that they employ because they understand that this is a defining moment if i miss this i may have to wait one year again are we together and so you see people waking up in the night 
are we together you see all kinds of chain readings people begin to deploy all kinds of creativity to make sure they maximize that moment and a wise person will not say you are working too hard because they know that this is a kairos moment so even when you see them stretching themselves beyond um the the usual way they would read you only encourage them you don't stop them because you know that if they miss out on that opportunity another example imagine with me a student who is writing his final exam say in law school you see that student has done everything and i mean the student is mandated to read and give the best but for that final exam if it means there are people who fast while they are reading pray while they are reading play worship while they are reading soak their legs in water while they are reading any skill by all means everything that becomes an advantage to maximize that moment because there are there are moments that when you miss that is the end of it are we together so we have the gift and the advantage of chronos the passage of time every day but the bible teaches us that in every man's life there are not many of these seasons but they are there and that they, you have to discern the technology of their arrival you need to learn how this how to know that you are in these seasons because the, for a man sometimes in an entire lifetime you may not have more than six of these seasons and for some of us we've already lost two or three so it will take the grace of god to catch up Pay attention please hallelujah that in a man's lifetime you will not have these defining moments come all the time for instance a man who wants to become a professional footballer at age 60 you see his zeal is correct his vision is correct but he missed a kairos moment and that there are no biases to that kairos moment there is no club sites that will take him no matter the skill the system that has been built around that field forbids that you will be part of it professionally at that age are we together is someone learning now that means it is not enough to have vision you must understand the timing component to life i must walk the works of him that sent me hallelujah when the disciples saw jesus they discerned a sense of strange urgency and the disciples wondered why jesus seemed to be up and about i mean you are the king of kings having all power you claim you are the son of god coming from heaven what is the rush about to the extent that you will forget to eat after a crusade you will think he should be resting then you see him with a woman at the well and with the same zeal and passion then he says gentlemen i know you are tired let's go to the other side we'll sleep in the boat while we are going he himself was sleeping meaning he was tired we're not the first to start this busy schedule jesus himself <laughs> you see the scriptural backing for what we do hallelujah and jesus got to a point where he let them know that he had to do this because there was urgency connected to it paul the apostle when paul encountered the lord jesus christ the level and the extent of urgency that was in paul to the extent that if they locked him up in prison he didn't have time sympathizing with his situation he said listen i don't need your food just get me a pen and get me something to be able to write in prison all he was concerned oh this church i've not visited them for three months i'm sure some of these people uh, wolves in sheep clothing will be in this church now let me write something to admonish them if you came to paul in prison to say how are you feeling that was not what he wanted to hear how is this church doing the church in this the church in that and then at the end he said i have fought the good fight i have finished my course not our course hallelujah are we together yes so timing is really really very important very very important when you give birth to a child a young baby it would be unfair and even wicked of you 
to now begin to flog the child to say i'm talking to you and you're not responding back to me no you need to give that child time after five six years and you find out for instance that the child cannot walk cannot talk that now becomes a serious condition a serious condition is that true because you have allowed time there are certain things that should have happened in time already i'm praying for someone in the name of jesus whatever has eaten your years because i will tell you do you know what the locusts and the canker worms eat they don't eat things they eat years there are spirits whose assignment is not your money there are spirits whose assignment is not your influence there are spirits whose assignment is your years i will restore the years that the canker worm the caterpillar let me speak to someone you are here and you say apostle i even gave my life to jesus christ late sincerely i have lived all kinds of things and as it is right now it seems like time is gone thank god you came for this conference i decree and declare may the god who is the lord of time bring restoration to your life hallelujah please sit down when you understand the power of time you will now know why god brought in two spiritual mysteries pastor nat to be able to help men to maximize destiny number one is speed number two is restoration these mysteries directly deal with time when god grants a man speed why do you pray for speed why do you ask for speed hallelujah if i left abuja by road to come here you cannot say i'm stagnated because the car would still be moving but the problem is with respect to the time allotted i may not arrive to meet the activity are we together now so if i can outsource another agency that can help me remember my movement is with respect to time so someone for instance and respectfully so who left in the morning most likely has not arrived by now are we together now and then another person both of us are enjoying movement when you say who are those making progress all of us will stand but who are those who are experiencing speed you see speed is the ability to do much within time i'm saying all of this because when i connect it to our destiny and i connect it to these kairos seasons because i will be showing you prophetically that as individuals as the body of christ as a continent we are in our kairos moment how do you know you are in your kairos moment the answer is in genesis 1 14 he said he made lights to signify time that means there is a revelation there is always a body of spiritual truth that helps you to know what season you are in he made lights and he put those lights to signify seasons you can use light revelation to know what season you have stepped into there are many many people listen when a farmer right now this is november december in nigeria and we call it dry season it would be unwise for a farmer to go to the farm right now is that true and then start farming and not look for an alternative source of water why because you do not have an advantage of rain well maybe in lagos here i don't know how it works are we together now but generally speaking in nigeria we have what we call the dry and the rainy season a farmer does not need to worry about rain when it's a rainy season he just farms and he allows the advantage that comes with the season are we together now there's what we call irrigation irrigation means you try to simulate rainy season in dry season because you want the crops to grow but that the season does not give you that advantage you have to outsource through technology another route so many people have missed certain seasons i'll give you an instance there are people who god deliberately brought close to others within a particular season and they did not discern why they were there 
the man will keep asking them can i help you and say no no worry little did they know the man had only two years and he will relocate somewhere and he there were kairos moments maybe god granted you access to someone in government it was by god's god's grace and the man was benevolent god gave you unusual access to his ears his heart and his hands but because you could not discern seasons hallelujah yeah. jacob said the lord was in this place but i knew not do you know because jacob did not discern the season in genesis 28 you know his punishment for that 20 years jacob paid the price 20 years two wives and six extra years after 20 years jacob said i need to leave and in chapter 32 when god was coming to him again he said this time around he held him and said i will not let you go are you i'm already this this long behind schedule unless you bless me i will not let you go if my time with you will be this night I will utilize the time and gain back 20 years i'm going to be showing you how to redeem time because there is a technology that has been given to the believers that when we engage it we are able to redeem and cover time hallelujah it is on the strength of these systems of advantage that the bible says for we know that all things all things can work together so don't say i gave my life to christ at 40 i mean the time i'm already halfway gone don't worry there is something you can do with god he designed a system in his economy where your one year can be what your 10 years would have been do you believe this in the name of jesus christ how do you prepare for this defining moments these opportune seasons you prepare for kairos by maximizing chronos that means every day the passage of time is the raw material you use in preparing for these defining moments you do not waste every day and waste every time and expect to just stumble into opportune times let me give you an instance let's assume for instance that a young music minister is trusting god for visibility that god would announce the person it is not the day the opportunity comes that he prepares are we together the opportunity the time he's looking for is kairos but the his performance during the kairos moment will depend on what happens in chronos david prepared for the palace not in the palace david took advantage of his chronos are we together now he learned how to sling he killed the lion he killed the bear it is interesting that nobody was there to record and capture it however the justice system of god preserved that that he was still using his chronos properly one time hmm, i like how god announces men the bible says that the father told him listen go and feed your brothers and he only took food and heard a beast roaring and he said what is the meaning of this they said this man goliath of god six fingers six toes young man go back home immediately he said what shall be done what shall be done to the man who takes this guy down and they said all kinds of things and he said listen I'm able to do this said, listen don't bring shame on our family we are warriors and he said listen don't disrespect me for wanting to take advantage of my kairos let me defend my preparation I was in the wilderness I was in the wilderness when the lion came when the bear came I tore it and Saul looked at him and said no there's something this man this is not he has prepared for the kairos moment and when he stood before goliath goliath said am i a dog israel this is what you are bringing and david said listen you come to me with your spears and with your bows but i come to you in a name i maximize my moments of preparation i will bring you down and use your own sword take off your head and give it to the birds and with one sling that is mastery he didn't he didn't throw the bible does not give us information that he kept doing trial and error he had done that in the wilderness god is speaking to someone already listen 
waiting for the day God will announce you is the recipe for remaining a mediocre forever. You prepare in prayer. God has told you he's sending you to the nations. The secret is not to start looking for opportunities. Sing my song, invite me. No, that's not how it works. Where nobody sees you is your greatest stage. The real stage is not where people see you. It's where you are alone. And you are praying, you are fasting, you are preparing. That is chronos being maximized. Are we together? According to the law of times and seasons, I guarantee you. Remember, the Bible says for everything there is a season. That means your season is there. John remained in the wilderness. He was not wasting his time. He was eating locusts and wild honey, preparing himself finding out the sign to identify jesus the bible says until his season of appearing when that season came with precision when he saw jesus he said behold the lamb i have prepared seeing you i know you are the one there are many of us we do not even know how the doors were to enter look like because we have been wasting the seasons of preparation either in jealousy or competition and all of that rather than preparing for glorious moments isn't it amazing ladies and gentlemen that the captain of our salvation jesus himself he used 30 years to prepare for a ministry of three and a half years if you looked at jesus you would call you would think that jesus had delay in purpose how do you prepare for 30 years what is so special about your assignment 30 years and then after 30 years from age 12 in fact to age 30 theologically speaking there is still a debate as to what jesus was doing because they were the silent days of jesus 18 years we do not hear about jesus again what was he doing where did he go the last thing we know about him is that he was in the temple listening to the doctors and asking intelligent questions at age 30 we see this young man coming to be baptized of john and john saw him and said behold the lamb that takes away the sins of the world he said i'm not even worthy to untie the latchet of your shoe and he said suffer it to be so that scripture will be fulfilled he baptized john and the heavens were open he was full of the spirit and he began his ministry within a short time the bible says his fame spread abroad because the level of power and grace and wisdom when he gathered the people and spoke they said we've not had this not in this fashion who is this man where did he come from they gave him according to the synoptic account of luke in luke chapter 4 they gave him the scroll of Isaiah and he began to read the spirit of the Lord is upon me he hath anointed me he read all of these things they were not impartations he used his chronos for someone already the spirit of God is speaking see if you do not perform well and you abort these defining moments it is because you wasted every day that means every day is counting for that day every day counting towards that day every day man of god your every day the time with god the time with prayer the two two hours the one one hour of worship counting building up for that moment of your season of appearing ask anybody today that god has helped and god has lifted they will tell you they can trace to moments 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 of pain moments of labor without reward are we together now moments they knew for most people listen listen for most people they saw long ago where god was taking them to do you know sincerely some of these days that god has brought us today we saw them long ago but we knew we we're not just going to jump into these days so just wishing and saying i have a dream <clears throat> when you have a dream you wake up and then you begin to walk with the holy spirit line upon line precept upon precept for some of us your service in this house is your maximizing chronos because a day will come god will send you like an arrow to some nation in the world and you may be pioneering a mighty revival but let me tell you if you are a revivalist your first commission will not be revival you already know you are in error when the, your first assignment 
becomes what you will be doing for the rest of your life that's not how god works with people if you are paul he will start with you in a certain way are we together now that means if you think god has called you to be an apostle and you get up and your very first assignment in life is apostolic ministry you are in error that's not how god leaves people god can call you to be a worshiper and your first assignment is to sweep the church how does sweeping the church have to what does it have to do with worship ask Stephen what attending tending to the welfare department had to do with him rising to be a very mighty man God will give you instructions he's using he's preparing you there are some of you because of the nature of the assignment God has given you he will not allow you stay with your parents he will put you with a strict parent somewhere and for 10 years you will not talk what god how what is all this i have parents this man is too harsh chronos mm -mm. god is preparing you for that time because the kind of body you will be carrying huh? you are going to be leading a stiff-necked people so it's important for you to be used to pain and controversy to build stamina and stature so god will leave you listen i'm speaking to you prophetically hallelujah Apostle, I know that God is calling me to be a great kingdom financier. Your first assignment will be to empty everything you get for that one year. He said, no, I resist this spirit. God does not. God cannot speak like that. You have already failed the test. Listen, I submit to you. We live in a world where people do not understand the laws of times and seasons. Instead of waiting and wishing for the day. There is already an assurance from scripture that your that day will come. Wishing for it does not make you step into it. It is maximizing your chronos. That means preparing for that evangelistic ministry, that apostolic ministry, that ministry of prophetic psalmistry. It does not start with invitations to go from church to church. It starts with your relationship. For every time you open your Bible, for every time you pray, for every time you come to church and sit quietly, and they say, listen, join a department. You are the one who cleans the pulpit. While you are cleaning the pulpit, there is a record in heaven. Your chronos is being maximized. One day they would look at you and say, listen, you are part of the welfare um, department. Okay, just lead us in a 10 minutes prayer. Aha. Uh -huh. 10 minutes prayer. And you say let's all pray let's hold our hands and give jesus praise and that 10 minutes becomes one hour they will start calling you pastor it's just that you're a pastor that can cook you see how you are graduating now 10 minutes prayer one day when they are looking for people to do a little five 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 minutes prayer the spirit of god because he supervises these seasons he will lead somebody to say that gentleman please let him come up and now you have an opportunity and you see when god wants to accelerate your life he will wait until the day your destiny helpers are before you and then that one opportunity hallelujah, hallelujah. you must understand those who excel in life are people who they live as if there is an assessment of them every day and it is true there is an assessment every day it's only that your grading will not be that day it will be a cumulative grading so every day you find someone who is doing well already praying and fasting and you are wondering what are you praying for again what are you studying for again has god not lifted you it is the preparation every day maximizing chronos that gives you an opportunity jesus did not die every day listen carefully but he prepared for his death from the time he was born it took him one day to die but it took him a long time to prepare for that one day he kept saying he destroyed this temple and i will build it he would be alone and he would go to pray what was he praying for then he went to get Simon. listen with all the preparation of jesus he almost aborted redemption father if it's possible take this cup off me your jesus the bible says if you turn aside in the day of battle please listen 
he said your strength is small god is speaking to me to encourage someone right now your appetite for visibility is what may destroy the seasons coming you need to reduce this this insistence to be known and prepare you announce yourself by being faithful in your everyday your faithfulness during your chrono seasons is what prepares you for that kairos moment you don't have to pray for it to come it's been programmed thou shall arise and have mercy upon zion for the time to favor her yea the kairos moment has come hallelujah you prepare in prayer you prepare in fasting you prepare by rising to a level of value and capacity that the moment your season comes is with gallancy and honor that you step into that season never to come out in shame again but for many people you see they think every day is kairos and so they can choose to waste every day not knowing that when these seasons go it takes a long time a long time anybody who did not farm this year is almost over in fact it's over you have to be patient for a few months while you are doing that you go and get your seeds you get your fertilizer you get everything preparing for that moment because for sure as far as the, there is day and night rainy season will come again is that true your pastor he shared his story many times when he was with Pastor Esco and all the, the, the events that happened, preparing for those moments. You see, there is nobody who comes out of nowhere. Let me tell you the truth. All that talk is nonsense. There is nobody. Just because you were not in the wilderness does not mean the person was not there. While you are killing the lion and the bear, nobody sees you. There's no audience to clap for you. But the all-seeing eye of God who controls times, You've got times and seasons in your hands. You call for light out of darkness. You don't need a man to be the God you are. Listen, very powerful song. So he controls times and seasons. Who told you that you must arrange your manifestation? Who told you you must arrange the seasons for your announcement? It is an unnecessary burden. In the economy of God, there is already room for your announcement. If you utilize that opportunity, respectfully speaking, let me tell you, and I say this with every sense of humility, I have seen pastors and I have seen leaders desiring to rise, desiring to find, especially in our day you know some of this celebrity thing everybody wants to be known and, and to be honest you know it, it's in men people want to maximize their destinies but i see how people ignore their every day and keep anticipating for that one day and then the one day comes and they are not even aware that it is the one day because you were so busy um so busy getting you were distracted and did not prepare there are other people who will prepare see one day will not come one day will come and meet them while preparing joseph listen carefully joseph never knew that by the next day he would be prime minister every opportunity he had to be a blessing with his gift he did because you give a portion to seven and to eight you do not know you do not know which of them you are waiting until the day a rich man meets you then you are kind to him you will be surprised that the person who will announce you to the rich man is the poorest person around you and because you refuse to show compassion you recycle seasons again there are many people who do not show honor to all men they want only specific people and they believe that when you meet somebody who has means it will fast track and accelerate your rising there are people who will never get serious with god until the day you give them a sermon you say you are preaching on wednesday and all of a sudden there's concordance there's greek and hebrew lexicon are we together there's all kinds of this they they recharge their phone data for three days that is only a preparation to maintain your reputation not to bless 
because the day the opportunity will come unfortunately it may come inside a plane not on the pulpit the person who will announce you can be in a plane and god gives you an opportunity 50 minutes you are with that person and god says now is your moment the thing about kairos moments is that kairos moments are not necessarily location dependent you need to be prepared in season and out of season it can happen anywhere if they if you had asked um if you had asked david to suggest where god will announce him he would not say it was on the battleground you probably choose somewhere else but simply faithfulness in carrying food was what announced the warrior they did not say that here is a competition if you can kill come and stand hallelujah i made up my mind that every opportunity god gives me listen ladies and gentlemen I do not I do not there is no such thing in my world as superior preparation and inferior preparation I take everything with destiny seriousness if you tell me I'm going to talk to two people you will see me preparing as if I'm going for a crusade why number one because i love jesus number two because i love the people but number three i understand that chronos is the unit of kairos every moment as i prepare i'm moving closer to that kairos moment hallelujah yes sir. thou shall arise and have mercy upon zion for the time i have discerned that there are opportune times the time to favor her yea the set time has come now write a few things so we'll find somewhere to pray there are three things that you do to maximize time three things and then we'll connect it with the theme for tonight three things number one the first assignment you have as far as times and seasons are concerned is to master the art of discerning seasons you need discernment the bible says and of the sons of issachar men who had an understanding of the times discern seasons you must know how to discern time how do you discern time the word of god is the instrument of discernment the word of god primarily is the instrument of discernment the word of god is the primary instrument for discernment number two study the nature of the dealings of the spirit with you and it can help you to point seasons you can there is a way god begins to deal with you suddenly god gives you an instruction you are going on 30 days prayer and fasting and tells you you are going to wake up every night even before pastor Nat does his hallelujah challenge god tells you you will start your own one week before him there are events around your life that already become pointers if you can discern the bible says when jesus was born there was a star and those who were wise men the magi they could read the star and they came with precision they were not born again they were not led of the spirit they used secular wisdom using light they came right where jesus was hallelujah you can discern seasons what is happening in my life i noticed in the last one week everybody is giving me money everybody is, is telling me listen come and do this someone wanted to preach and he said i'm busy can you stand in for me god what are you saying what are you saying most believers do not have not trained their faculty of discernment so we do not know when we step into very defining moments there are people you know that ordinarily you should not meet lord why did you give me access to be among these great people what should i do now and we waste it we laugh around we eat and we leave only to find out that that door will not be open like that again if joseph came before pharaoh and said pharaoh i'm not here to interpret your dreams number one go and catch potiphar's wife you don't know what has happened to me let me tell you i'm here to defend myself 
you know what would have happened to him if he did not drop his offense and childishness and focus on the seasons he, he would have said now that i'm with you pharaoh even if i die let me die you know how people behave an innocent man has been in prison in x number of years plus the two years that were added as a result of the wickedness of the wine presser he refused to remember me and pharaoh's okay i've heard you we are really sorry about everything go back to the prison or go back to your father's house either ways he would not have succeeded but when he got there the ability to have prepared and once he got there pharaoh said this is my dream and he laughed he said pharaoh it's not about cows it's not about plants you have seen a mystery that connects you to the laws of seasons that there will always be seasons of plenty and of luck now let me recommend save 20 percent of this and that and pharaoh said now you are talking within that moment joseph rose and became prime minister no election no voting you would see joseph and say where did you come from let me tell you where he came from from the dreamer to the pit to his faithfulness in the house of potiphar to his getting to the prison even though he was innocent all of them were counting for that day every time you see a day of favor a day of favor is equal to many days of preparation a day of manifestation that was well utilized is a cumulative of many 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 great days i will never waste seasons in my life because in my mind every day counts every day counts I won't pray i won't say i'm too tired to pray today after all there is tomorrow remember the power of the day after tomorrow comes from the prayer of yesterday and today it's a cumulative we continue to abort seasons because we waste our every day you get up in the morning you sleep you know anytime you are not serious you are not at anything no project there is nothing that is running and driving your life the bible says to learn from jesus when jesus showed up there was nothing enough to distract him he had set his face like a flint about my father's business at age 12 even his parents came to look for him say why are you looking for me don't you go to the temple don't they read the scriptures did you not hear that i should be about my father's business that sense of urgency now is the acceptable time and that is true but you see your now is a cumulative of everything you have done with your chronos when god announces you it is because he has given you an opportunity to prepare and if that season comes ladies and gentlemen and you are not prepared you know what happens seasons will recycle again truly you will find out that a realm you should have entered a door that should have opened for you there are people who sit down and keep regretting and shouting and saying listen i've not been promoted i've not been lifted this is unfair in this church by now by my status i should be a pastor by now i should be an apostle by now i should be a prophet in fact it's just because of condition i should be rich by now all those explanations do not count every day you do this to the list of the brethren you come to church you are sweeping he's counting are we together yeah. how you use your time for Ruth to be the wife of Boaz she didn't just appear one day and say listen are you going to marry me or not or you are going to waste prophecy I'm going to be a grandmother of Jesus no <laughs> Naomi advised her and said everything you do in that field we're coming there tomorrow because we're going to be talking about the global harvest hallelujah it is a kairos moment among the many things the greatest time in human history right now for the global harvest but you need to draw a lesson from the life of ruth because naomi told her he said when you get to the field don't be distracted there is something within the field that is for you when you go there be cautious everything you do will count and when she went there she gleaned with honor and respect 
and the elders and the people there was boaz there and he saw her he said who is this that is diligent and faithful he said do not hurt her allow her to take as much and she went back to ruth she maximized every day until she stepped into the lineage of jesus john utilized every day until he got to a point where he started wasting his chronos through offense through bitterness and one time he said go and tell jesus are you the messiah or should we expect another jesus said something has happened to you offense has come into you and he died as a birthday gift a prophet who prophesied the bible says of all the prophets isaiah jeremiah mighty men none was like john and look how his life ended the birthday gift for a girl dancing before the king they went to remove his head when i learned this principle believe me you go you go to my room now you put on my laptop you will see there is a message and there is a study there are no lazy moments in my life if i wake up this is the day the lord has made we are ready to walk i must walk the works of him that sent me it has nothing to do with invitation it has nothing to do with ministrations i can tell you with all due respect and humility that i have stepped into seasons in my life and even in ministry they didn't seem to carry a semblance of those honor it's just that thank god i was prepared there have been times i found myself in the midst of people and they say apostle we're going to give you this time you're going to talk this is what you will talk about there was no bible there there was no nothing there was no not it was from the residue of that preparation he told elijah eat eat now you will not have that opportunity eat now he ate and he went back to sleep the angel tapped him and said don't you understand times and seasons eat now and the bible says he went 40 days on the strength of what he has eaten for someone let me tell you the assignment that god is giving you right now you will not have the opportunity now that you do not yet have children god is saying fast and pray because your first set it will be a set of twins while you are saying amen let me tell you the other side of that story are we together you will be surprised that the five six seven eight hours there are many people today who by reason of biological timing don't have the strength again to be able to pray and fast and do certain things while there were people who were taking care of your needs god said keep investing in your spiritual life but you refuse now respectfully speaking maybe your dad has gone to be with the lord your mom has gone to be with the lord the family responsibility is now on you the time you should use to pray and fast you have to use it to look for money if you understand this law of time and seasons you it will change your life in a way that you cannot imagine that every day counts every day counts every day counts every moment counts for someone god can tell you okay while you are trusting god for a husband or a wife quickly do the masters now quickly do the phd now because the level of commitment that it would demand of you it can cost your home utilize the time mm -mm. i have all the time is my life the foolishness of a generation that has dropped has torn people down there are others god will say i'm going to give you a great ministry but come to oasis and sit down and look for something to do and serve and you find out that god keeps sending you to places that are uncomfortable is because god wants you to taste of everything you will be a leader and you will be an overseer of a ministry how do you lead when you do not know the dynamics of leadership while the message is going on god will say okay they should allocate him to stand outside at the road and that person is going to be a mighty apostle and while you are standing someone sees you and says, i used to know you on campus is this how you have lost your fire you are standing as a protocol on the road and you will feel stupid uh-huh that's how great men abort greater destinies you stand there and god says you'll be patient and when god is done with you someday when you become a great leader someone will say listen i will be your biggest partner 20 years ago 
I came for OSS conference. Were you not the one who was standing at the door? God told me 20 years later, you will be a man of God. I should sponsor it. Listen, how do I express this thing? Most people have aborted times, have aborted great destinies. Imagine if Jesus kept saying, I will die. Simple. It's okay. I'm going to die. That's the most important thing. Judas will betray me. I don't know when. I just know that I'm going to die and then I will purchase salvation. Let's eat and drink. Ladies and gentlemen, um, I am the savior of the world. Don't forget, I am the logos of God. I am not a false prophet. Jesus would have been surprised. It was the prayer bank, the fasting bank, the commitment. You see that? All the women who later helped him when he died is because he helped them when he was alive. If he didn't help them when he was alive, his body would be there with nobody to come and clean him. Hallelujah. So number one, you must discern seasons. Let me hurry up. Number two, you must know what steps to take when you come into seasons not every step is important when you get into certain defining seasons please listen to me you must know what steps to take the bible says and of the sons of issachar men who had an understanding of the time and to know what israel ought to do there is what you need to do when you come into certain seasons for some of you when you come into certain seasons it's a call for greater levels of consecration god will make certain demands on you unusual demands some of you are even in that season right now you need to know what to do by the spirit lord what do i need to do with this season and god says from now till january from 12 to 3 let that be your prayer time that is my time meeting with you it is not a general instruction for everybody it is just from now till january if you miss because that opportunity is where it is within that encounter that the real mantle for your ministry will rest on you and if you do not know how to utilize that time many years ago i, I used to go to our boys quarters and carry a stick stick and stand there and preach i would be shouting and preaching alone i didn't know my mother was hiding somewhere looking at me it was later in the future she told me one day because she had been praying my grandfather was uh, you know the first trustee a pioneer of a denomination so i come from a lineage of of uh, missionaries and, and and pastors she had been praying that either her younger brother or her son let god use at least one person and I was there, I would hold the sticks and I'd be preaching, preaching. And when it's time, I'll be laying hands on blocks. I mean it, I'm not, I'm not joking. And I would sense the anointing of the Holy Spirit. Literally. If I laid hands on blocks, how stubborn is the head that I would lay hands on that it will not be? Preparation preparation for some of you god has given you a mandate that you are going to serve the purposes of god with kings and as it is right now god cannot announce you because announcing you will be a tragedy to your own life so god will withhold your rising not every closed door is demonic there are closed doors that are a sign of god's mercy because you are in your kairos moment but you have wasted your chronos so god will give you a chance to start afresh again let's wrap up second corinthians 6 and verse 2 from where you got the theme second corinthians 6 and verse 2 it says for i have heard of thee in the time accepted and in the day of salvation i have succored thee it says behold now so they say now prophesy to yourself say now. now now is the accepted time behold now is the day of salvation now when he was speaking about this he was speaking with respect to salvation the new birth encounter we're coming there tomorrow are we together but for now salvation is the word soteria the greek word is all encompassing healing lifting 
break through the fullness of the life and the power of God manifest he says now is the acceptable time the acceptable time for the believer started from the time Jesus resurrected are we together now because you will see in other versions the acceptable time is the time of his grace that now the the wall has been torn the veil has been torn and now we have access in Christ we can have access to our now the acceptable time regardless what happened before that in Christ today can be your day of salvation he says they heard the word just like we we, uh, we they heard the word just like um we did but the word did not profit them not being mixed with faith in them that heard it he said today if you hear his word harden not your hearts like they did in the wilderness so for someone god is speaking to you that this is your today today does not mean 24 it just means your season your season of lifting your season of shining your season of being announced are we together now and because you know that it is your day your prayer now will be lord arise and have mercy upon me for the time to favor me for the time to lift me for the time to open up doors for me even the set time when you know your set time you maximize it by crying for mercy he says call on to me and i will answer you see mercy is not for sinners it is of the lord's mercy that we are not consumed are we together now don't make a mistake of thinking the prayer of mercy is for sinners it is by the mercy of god listen he says i will have mercy upon whom i will have mercy i will have compassion upon whom i will have compassion the moment you discern your season you know that this is a defining moment for me you begin to pray god show me mercy grant me access by your spirit to maximize this season oh blessed is the man who becomes a beneficiary of god's mercy i wish i had the time to open you up to the dimensions of god's mercy the mercy of god does not just mean pardoning for an offender no the mercy of god means to show pity to give you a leverage From the rising of the sun to the setting of the sun, your name is to be honored. A few weeks ago, I just sensed very strongly in my heart that God will have me spend some extended time praying in the night nights are usually my time of prayer but i began to sense i'm wrapping up now i began to sense very strongly that a new season was going to open up for me and in one of the nights i was praying and just worshiping and i had a vision and every time i see god lifting me or going to another dimension i usually will see a military man and then you know how they dress military people that's what i saw and while i was praying i just sensed a very strong anointing of the holy spirit and the lord took me to jeremiah 1 from verse 9 he says authority over nations authority over nations to pull down to uproot there is a mantle and a grace for that see having power over cities having power remember in matthew 25 the parable of the five talent the reward that was given to them there are three levels of authority that a man can command on earth number one and is the least level is authority over things where god gives you access to money and not all of that the second level of authority you can command in the spirit is authority over nations and territories the highest level of authority a man can command is authority over God's program. God literally makes you a steward, not of nations, of his program. That means God will say for the next 10 years, there is a harvest of 100 million souls. You are the one I'm putting in charge of that program. Hallelujah. 
when i began to have that vision i started praying i said lord whatever it would take by your mercy and by your grace you are granting us access and authority over systems over nations let it be for your glory are we together now i'm saying this because for i believe that for god to have put this thing now is the acceptable time for some of us when you go back home hallelujah challenge should not just end because it ended you should do your own and pray and 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 pray and worship and say lord the demands of this new season now is the acceptable time heaven has already signified through this word that it is time for you to carry greater anointings it is time for you to step into mantles it is time for certain doors to be open i pray for you that you will not make the mistake of jacob jacob said the lord was in this place and i knew not man of god hear me you may need to subject yourself right now taking advantage of this time businessman for some of you you will need to settle down and pray we're going to pray for just one minute you don't even have to stand whether you are seated or standing you are going to cry unto god and say father i have i have for some of you you have you have mismanaged your chronos and right now that the kairos moment has come or is coming the truth is there is no spiritual redness i'd like you to cry for mercy from heaven 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 cry to the holder of times and seasons show mercy oh god cry for mercy oh god Someone is crying. Show me mercy to maximize every day. To maximize every day as I prepare for that defining moment. Hallelujah. The Bible says, He that is faithful in little, it says he is faithful in much. If you are unfaithful in the unrighteous mammon, he said. Who shall commit to you the true riches of the kingdom let me encourage you that tomorrow while you are coming please invite every other person we may not be able to have the time to pray for people but one of the things i hope we'll do tomorrow is to invoke the mercy of god over your years not just your body we need to cry and say lord the remaining time i have can you place honor and grace and mercy upon it that my remaining one and a half month in 2022 will be like 10 years put together because that something has happened to that time you redeem time by crying for mercy that the lord of time will do something upon that time but for now let me speak over your life i stand in partnership with the grace that is upon this altar and i decree and declare by the power of the holy spirit obtain grace to maximize your chronos obtain grace to pray obtain grace to fast obtain grace to worship obtain grace to be on fire obtain grace to connect to the right people obtain grace to be diligent in the name of jesus christ and i declare that the spirit that is called a waster that wastes years any association any relationship anything at all you are connected to that is a programming from hell to waste your years i declare you are free from it right now pastor Nat, is it all right to request that the people come with their prayer request tomorrow will that be fine okay i want you tomorrow even for your loved ones who may not make it and for those who are falling online i trust that you also be a miracle service here tomorrow so you can send in i believe use the link the media team in oasis here would 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 give the link you can send in your prayer request please from all over the world europe america send in your prayer request we're going to collate it here and the god of heaven will arise as a mighty terrible one in the name of jesus christ 
the lord bless you and the lord increase you in jesus name i pray Hello, beloved in Christ. We hope this message was a blessing to you. I would want you to do something for us. If you are new here, kindly hit on that subscribe button for us. And then like this video as well. Share to your family and friends to bless them. Because we know that this message will be a blessing to their body, to their soul, and to their spirit. We would need you to do one thing for us too. Tell us in the comment section where you were watching us from. And then if you've got any testimony for us, kindly share with us. For watching in the name of Jesus drought in your life that even when it is physical rainy season it is still dry season spiritually financially and otherwise I decree and declare let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall let the rain 